Good morning, friends. It's Julie, and today we're going to go through what sold in my antique vintage booth in the month of October. And I'm gonna have to uh, eat crow a little bit on this one because in my last video when I did it, I said it was tracking really good, and it tanked after that. So I'm gonna not not gonna say that this time. I do have four pages of report though. So every day, basically, I think every day I sell something, even if it's like a five dollar or one dollar thing. So it's not like people aren't shopping. It's just that I'm not selling. I didn't really sell any big items last month. So let's go through the staple items that I sell and we're going to go from least to greatest. Okay, the first category is linens and I sold one item for $3.95. And then we go to patches and that was $9. So I sold a couple different packs. And then we go to cookbooks, which was $9.95. It was actually one cookbook and it was priced a little bit more than I usually price and it sold. Then records was $11.90. I haven't really stocked that for a while, uh, but yes, they still consistently sell. And then last month, my top selling postcards came in um, at fifth place from the bottom for the total of $13. Yeah, yeah, not as well. And then the next one is jewelry single pieces. And this would be like, they're usually pins and stuff at this point. That's what I've been stocking. And that was um, $13.90. And then we could go to single books for $14.85. Blind date with a book, which I haven't really stocked that for a while either because they sold, they sold, they slowed down quite a bit in sales over the summer. Usually the summer is when people want them, but that one went for $15. And then book pages, um, just single piece pages of books that I put in a clear sleeve, and that was uh, $16. The next one is flowers, and that came in at $16.70. I don't know if I'll be restocking those unless I find a really good deal, because the one sale that I went to, they had like three sales from their house, is done. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, the next one is photos, and that went for $17.85. And two months ago, uh, that was my highest one at over $200. And the next one is general ephemera, any kind of ephemera that I don't uh, categorize it out. And that went for 20. And then yarn came in at $24.90. I must have had a knitter because I also sold some knitting needles, which I'll tell you about later. Uh, then at the dollar fair, which I had set up a shelf that to sell everything on it is a dollar, I sold $25 worth. Now, um, the shelf takes up quite a bit of room and for one month to only sell $25 off of it, it really isn't paying off. Um, I sold down probably half of the items. I was hoping they would sell quit flip faster because I could put more on it, but it didn't. So what I'm probably going to do is just go down and put those things on the bottom of the shelf and just say the, these shelves are a dollar each um, and then just let that clearance out. And then on the top, I'm going to uh, start adding ephemera. I think my postcard doors are getting quite full. So there are a couple states that and areas that I can um, make their own box out of. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, all right. The next category, three bags, and these are just the $5 mystery bags of just different um, themes or no themes. And that went for $30. And then magazines, which was up a little bit, uh, went for $30.70. I didn't sell any last month. Stickers, second to the last, was $46. And the top selling uh, staple item was mystery jewelry bags. Yes, I bet you guessed it. $49.50. Yep. So those are still selling well, and I um, actually restocked them recently and <laughs> didn't sell one. November is usually the time to decorate, so people are looking for decor. So if you are looking towards next year, get your Christmas in um, at, at the end of October and start moving it in actually at the beginning of October. Because by the time Thanksgiving comes, most people don't want to buy any Christmas decor. So yeah, that's when you want to do it. And plus, if you get yours out before other people, then if you have like the same ceramic Christmas tree, they're going to buy yours first. And then there's the other ones that are going to sit. But ceramic tr Christmas trees don't really sit unless they're like priced out of, out of sale. So, okay, let's uh, talk about what else sell, sold this month. I had a spinning wheel music box and that went for eleven ninety five. It didn't it wasn't a perfect one, that's why I didn't sell it for higher. I had a little sewing kit for four ninety five. A walking cane, it was carved for nineteen ninety five. 
a door hook for $5.95, a Bible cover for $7.95. This was a part of that one of the dollar auction lots, and this was a religious lot, and they've already sold the um, Last Supper painting. There's a couple things left out of there, but really good return on the money for a dollar. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that at the end, too. Um, then I had a stoneware piece for $4.95, a dish for $17.95, I believe it was one of the white Surrey dishes, a set of three Pyrex bowls for $49, Another purse, a backpack purse for $14.95. Pumpkin garland for $10. A green shaker box for, for um, $5.95. And another shaker box for $4.95. A, an apron, which is a tool belt apron. It's a man's apron um, with advertising, went for $4.95. Another pumpkin garland for $7. A wood lot sign for $9.95. Um, a winter swag for $5.95, and this I um, had it on my spinning wheel. I actually, over the summer, purchased quite a few boxes, actually probably late spring, from Joann's, which were $5 Christmas boxes, and so that was one of the things out of there. I have really made my money back and more on those, so I hope to find those again. Then a jar of vintage bulbs for $5.95, a vase for $12.95, a McCoy, yes, the real McCoy wishing well for $15. And I sell those, I've sold them many times from 15 to 25. The market on McCoy items seems to have gotten soft, at least where I am, which is just like the collectors are probably aging out and flooding the market when they get rid of their stuff, which just happens. I mean, uh, there are trends in collectibles. Then the next one was a brown bear koozie, 195, you know, local kind of items. Um, then I sold a couple kitchen utensils. One was a chrome wood spoon, and the next one was a potato masher. I used to get these at for 50 cents to a dollar, and I sold those for 3.95 and 4.95. A brownie camera for 19.95, and this was part again of the auction lot. I believe I might have gone up and spent five or six dollars on that lot of um i think it was mr Mis excuse me miscellaneous items uh, then i sold two pairs of knitting needles and it was the same time that i sold the yarn and they were 4.95 each so some knitter came through and had a good day at my booth and then a one of those cookie stamps for a dollar it's been sitting in my booth for a long time uh three feather trees for 19.95 i had these out in my booth last year for christmas and I probably pressed them too high. And so this time I'm like, I'm just putting them for half price uh, or less. And then um, they went out the door. So then I won't be carrying them over. They're really cute. But if somebody remembers last year, oh, those are the same trees. Oh, those are the same trees, you know, three years in a row. And, and I don't really want to store all that. Um, it just kind of gets old. So we might as well have someone take them home and enjoy them. Then I had an ice decanter for $19. $19. And finally, a granite ware, I think it was granite ware, berry bucket for $15, which I think I paid like $1 or $2 at a garage sale. All right, so then we come to the end and the totals. You ready for this? It wasn't that great. If you've been um, keeping track at home here, and the total is $691.05. Yeah, not that great. And then... My minus the sales commission that they take 10% and then the credit card transaction fees comes to $607.54. And my rent is $295. I'm doing my calculations as we go. So that means I am taking home $312.54. Okay. So just to think about this for a second is when I source, I sourced for not only my booth, but for eBay. So let's say I spent, um, let's see, $100 last month on things for my booth. So that's going to take me to $212.50. Let's just say $212. I probably spend two to three hours at most a week. So that's... Um, 12 hours. So let's round it up to 15 just in case. So 212 divided by 15 hours is $14 an hour, which is um, more than minimum wage. It's probably like, you know, I am McDonald's wage <laughs> without the grease. So, but I can raise and that is on a, a month that I feel I didn't do well.
So for the amount of time I put into it, it for me, it works. Um, and I know that this is a lower, this is probably the least amount of sales I've had since I've started sharing with you. So um, you're just seeing the ups and downs. Now, October is usually a very good month, but I, you know, for some reason at the end of the month, it tanked saw my previous video it was unboxing those postcards and I got a couple more dollar lots and so that's what I want to talk to you about a little bit at this at the end here is that you make your money when you purchase so like for the brownie camera if you saw that on sale for ten dollars um, and I sold it for twenty dollars minus a ten percent commission and if they do credit card maybe now I'm making like 17 18 dollars you know get 17 and 18 dollars so then the profit is about seven dollars or so 750 and so that's not a lot of profit and off of one item so if I but if I can buy a lot of items like maybe five to ten items for the same price then my uh, uh, return is gonna go up because you need a certain amount of inventory f until you only sell a percentage of your inventory every month. And that's something that I might be talking to you about later. Um, I'm thinking about doing a uh, Vintage Booth 101 series, You're talking about if you're if it's right for you, um, how to pick a mall, what to look for, inventory, and all that stuff. I'm not a pro, obviously. I'm not the one that lives on this income. It's just a nice companion to my eBay business. And because sometimes I just don't want to ship, so I stick it in the booth or, or vice, you know, vice versa. I have something really valuable, so then I put on an eBay, get more money for it. So to me, it's a good companion. So I'm thinking about doing a series, and I've sold in a couple different markets, um, Minnesota, Montana. I've done vendor shows, all kinds of stuff. Anyways, but the idea of... Uh, in knowing if a vendor booth is good, if online sales is good, and comparing those two, I do have a video for you that I've done previously that will go through those and what my thoughts are on them. So thank you so much for watching, guys, and have a joyful day. Goodbye.